Okay. Well, uh, my microphone is still shitty. So that's fucking amazing. All right. Well, sorry for the poor mic quality, but we're going to have to go without it. I do not have the fucking patience today to deal with the fancy ass microphone bullshit. So we're going to do it like this. Uh, again, welcome to this uh, fucking shit show. Uh, we're going to torture my ass by watching Michigan college football, spring football. Last week we covered Ohio State. Southeast day goes the 619 working go bucks. Goddamn right, go fucking bucks. Um so yeah, I'm gonna pull up the Michigan uh spring game roster. And we're gonna get set to go as obviously with everything happening after they won the national title. This is man. I hate saying that. I fucking hate saying that. I hate I hate everything. <laughs> I hate it. All right, we'll do it anyway, but I'm going to fucking complain. All right, so I got the spring game roster up here today, but it's going to be kind of tough to kind of work through as a lot of these guys are going to be <sighs> fucking... Wearing the same number, so that's wonderful. All right. Well, here we go. Defending national champion, Michigan Wolverines in the maize and blue spring game. Piss and blue, I guess you can say. As I'm trying to get this damn thing fully up. And then we're going to be kicking off here in just a few minutes. Uh, I started last week a little late. I think I was I thought I was going to be late here for a minute. But, nope. Thankfully, I don't have to be late for this fucking shit show. I'm not, I'm clearly not a Michigan fan, as I think some of you guys can very much tell at this point. But you know what? God damn it! I'm gonna suck it up and I'm gonna do it. So there you go. Just getting my scoreboard set up. We have not kicked off yet in Ann Arbor. I'm rooting for the meteor to strike, and I think we are set to go on our side at least. So. Chance Walker, hey man, appreciate it, man. I don't do I I genuinely love doing college football stuff, so I'm glad I uh, get to entertain you guys for probably the next two hours, and uh, you know, you get to hear uh, Buckeye moan and bitch and complain. Is he wearing a fucking WWE championship? Are you fucking Charles Woodson? You son of a bitch! That son of a bitch. He's wearing a goddamn. National Championship WWE belt. What in the fuck? That's fucking heresy. So you force yourself to watch Michigan. Hopefully they don't start. Never mind. Ah, uh, okay. Of course you do that. That's got to be some custom-made belt. That's bullshit. Fuck you, Woodson. Fuck you, Charles Woodson. Fucking hate you. <laughs> he can gloat. They they are the defending national champions. I guess they can gloat. I don't have to like it though. I don't think anybody has to like it. So, as we know, if you were here last week when you watched this spring game, as we kind of figured out, spring games don't work the same way as regular season games. Obviously, for one, they don't count towards the record because you're beating yourself up. But two. Uh, there's going to be some two-hand touch. You don't touch the quarterback for obvious reasons. You don't want to hurt your quarterback. Um, and you don't necessarily really want to tackle everybody. There will be some tackling allowed, I'm, assure, I'm assuming. Uh, but there is just, um, you know, there's going to be some different rules to how this game is ran. Score is going to be played a little differently. We're going to have a running clock, I assume throughout the game and we should be done and dusted by two <laughs> sorry i'm extremely allergic to michigan bullshit so ah, there you go all right so appreciate you guys being here for this um as usual if anything happens we'll have a graphic play uh, a couple other things though remember that tonight this is not the only game we're doing today tonight we're going to be coming back on the air 
um, as we are going to stream probably the UFL game of the week. Uh, the D.C. Defenders taking on the unbeaten Birmingham Stallions in Birmingham. That's going to be a classic. And then to counteract that tomorrow at 2.30, it's UFL Tank Bowl between the Arlington Renegades and the Houston Roughnecks. Both teams winless. So that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that at least. I just got to get through this first. As usual... If there's any comments, questions, or whatever you want to ask about the game, feel free to drop it in the chat. I will answer your questions regardless. Uh, I just showed this big son of a bitch. He's wearing, he's got, why does everybody have a belt today? Why does everybody have a fucking belt today? You're the defending champs. Yeah, sure. But why do you all have belts? Ugh. Fucking shit. I hate this. I'm going to complain so much during this stream. <laughs> like, it's just going to be me two hours of just bitching, I think. But I, I guess you guys don't mind that. Uh, obviously, Michigan coming off of a national championship victory against Washington. They also retired Nick Saban in the Rose Bowl. And then Jim Harbaugh decided that he's done his job and he's going to go back to the NFL. So they are rebuilding after a national championship that took literally the entire reign of Jim Harbaugh to get there. And, uh, you know, they're going to be rebuilding this upcoming season. They got some good players coming back. They got Alex Orgy, for example, the uh, uh, the defense, the, the the quarterback, it looks like, for Blue today. Um, so we are about to kick off from the big house in Ann Arbor. As we are in the maize and blue, you got Michigan on one side dressed in all maize, the other side dressed all blue. Uh, wait, 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 two hours of my fucking life. Okay, that's enough bitching. Let's get to the game. <laughs> And we are underway in the big house. Mays will kick it off. Blue elects not to return it. Bounces into the end zone for a touchback. So let's see if they put up a graphic on what the specific rules of this game are. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. So here comes Alex Orgy in at quarterback for the blue side. 6'3", 236 out of Sage. How do you pronounce that? Sackies, Texas. I don't fucking know. He's a Wolverine. I don't care. All right. You got to pull my roster up. So, blue roster, it's deep, man. You got so many players. I hate that they got sit double numbers for some of these fucking players. Ridiculous. All right. There we go. 12 minute quarters, by the way, as well. Snap. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle. He's going to break free for a pretty good run there. That was number seven, Donovan Edwards, with the carry on the play there. So that'll set up another first down for the Blue, as they're giving up, they're giving over some of his stats: 120 rushes for barely 500 yards and five touchdowns last season. It's supposed to play a more prominent role this upcoming season, as far as I'm aware. All right, and again, both sides will have three timeouts apiece. So, let's see. Snap. Orgy's going to play action. Pass is going to be almost caught but dropped. That was number 44, Mac Bre Max Bredson, who was the attendant player, receiver on the play, the tight end. The uh, soft senior tight end, I should say, coming into his last year. <laughs> Orgy is still wearing his fucking – they're still wearing their fucking helmets from the goddamn national championship game. Still has the sticker on and everything. Are you fucking kidding me? Clean their damn helmets off. Second and ten. Snap. Orgy. They're going to hand it off at the middle. Back and to number seven. He's going to bring it all the way out to the 47-yard line. That was Edwards again on the carry. And it's just going to bring up third and short for the blue. Once again, if you guys have any questions about this game or spring game or anything in football in general, just 
shoot me a message and I'll be happy to answer it. Or if you just want to laugh at me like Kurzov is, that's fine too. And Jim Harbaugh apparently got a Michigan title tattoo. Jesus Christ. Snap. Alex Orgy looking to throw. And that's going to be behind the intended receiver. That was intended for Tyler Morris, the uh, junior. And that's going to be incomplete. So they called, they gave him a first down on the last play, by the way. So now it's second and 10. Uh, yeah, I mean, Orgy, he just threw that ball way behind his ass. So <laughs> there you go. This roster I get today is coming from the Maze and Blue Review. So if it's a little off, you can blame them. All right, second and 10 ball on the um, blue 47-yard line. Orgy's going to do a quick dump down to Tyler Morris. He'll catch it. He's going to find himself a little bit of spacing. It's clothesline from the back of the head. Brought down on the other 47-yard line. He literally just got it. Took an, a forearm to the back of the head. That looked a little rough. <laughs> Should have hit him harder. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Going to be third and four on the 47. This time they're on the May side of the field. As we'll see what the kids are going to do. 13 people showing up now for this game. I appreciate you all being here. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat and I'll answer them. Orgy sends a man in motion. That's number 84, uh, Dale Chesson. And they're just going to do a quick handoff up the middle. It's going to go nowhere fast. So that's going to be fourth down for the blue. And let's see, they're kind of in no man's land here. They're just barely outside of um, their, you know, they could probably punt the ball if they really wanted to, but you're way outside of field goal range right now, but you're pretty close for a punt opportunity. So what are you going to do here? Are you going to send the punting unit out, give them a quick test, or what are you thinking? And, I mean, I know I'm a Buckeye fan. Those maze uniforms, those all yellow maze unis are fucking ugly. Jesus Christ. They look like highlighters on the field. All right, they're going to go for it. Fourth and three, Orgy. He's going to look to throw. And that's going to be caught, completed. Again, Max Bredson, intended target, will complete the reception this time. That's going to be a first down for the blue. So there you go. And that was a very tough catch by Max Bredson there. He had two dudes on him at the same time. 20 tried to come up and knock the ball out, but he just couldn't quite get there in time. So there we go. Blue is driving down the field now, so that's good at least. Orgy trying to get hit, trying to get his uh, running back Edwards in position. So there's another receiver in motion. Snap, Orgy looking to throw. It's going to be caught by number 81, Peyton O'Leary. And he's going to pick up first down just like that. Got about seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Seven minutes to go already in this first quarter. And, uh, well, there you go. So, again, appreciate you all being here today. Um, first to ten here for the blue side. They are in May's territory now. On the 28-yard line, <laughs> trips or a heavy-loaded ace formation. She's going to hand it off to Donovan Edwards. He'll try to go cut to the outside. He's got some room. He'll get tripped up by the shoelaces at the 22-yard line. So it's going to be about second and four. With uh, about six minutes to go. And, again, this is a spring game. So, obviously, we're playing with a running clock here. Uh, not a whole lot of time stoppages here. Everyone's getting some playing time, just getting some film, trying to figure out who you're going to be starting come fall. I really don't get why they don't just wipe off their helmets. Are they just letting the players that played in the national championship wear their same helmets? Oh, my God. Woodson, put the fucking belt away, bro. Put the fucking belt away. Origin hands it off to Donovan Edwards. He's got a hole. He'll cut through. Brings it about to the 19 and a half, 18 yard line. We're going to be about third and two, I would assume, on this upcoming play here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was a first down. What the hell am I looking at? <laughs> first and 10 for blue. 
the maze side not really putting up much of a fight at the moment they're trying to at least but so far not so good you don't want to just bend over for these guys this is your starting offense against your starting defense right here so you're trying to get these guys as much work as you can at least what they're supposed to be starting right now Snap, Orgy hand, fakes the handoff to Edwards. He's scrambling out of the pocket. He's going to make a whole room for himself down to the 10. Five walks in. And that's a touchdown for the for the blue team. Touchdown for the blue team. Yeah, I'm going to back. Woo! Who can stop me? Stop me. Who can stop me? What? Yeah. Woo! As the blue team, I just realized the whole time, blues had the ball. And I didn't change the fucking football icon because this is a very haphazard production. <laughs> so four and a half minutes to go. Again, this is a running clock, so we're not going to be on this very long at all. They hand Alex Orgy the belt that Woodson was holding on to. Ah, oh, that's so pretentious. Uh, all right. Line up for the field goal. Snap good, kick is up, kick's good. Again, I don't give a fuck. I hate Michigan, so I'm not going to go hyperactive for this. I'm just going to laugh when they fuck shit up. But so far, the offense is clicking at least against their best defense. The offense is clicking. One of the, one of the Maze players got absolutely trucked on that touchdown run. And one of their, and their touchdown celebration was a bowling pin celebration really bold into the end zone that's that's stupid i mean i i'm saying it because i'm a buckeye but god am i sounding a little too salty <laughs> just a little salty yeah anyway three minutes to go in the first as they are going to line up to kick it away now we don't have this isn't the only spring game going on today. I know we got Notre Dame's doing a game starting at one on Peacock, and then uh, Florida State's got another spring game at four. I'm not covering those. Uh, this is the only spring game I'm covering today. I got UFL games covering later tonight, and this is the defending national champs, so I'm not gonna get too crazy about it. Kicks away as Mays takes over, it's gonna bounce to the end zone for a touchback. So with about two and a half minutes to go in the first, we're going to see another quarterback, Davis Warren, take the field for Mays. Davis Warren, let's see who the hell this kid is. Senior quarterback from Los Angeles, California. So I'm surprised he didn't transfer. I guess he really likes Michigan that much, huh? All right, there we go. Two minutes to go in the first quarter here as Mays takes over first and 10 on the 25-yard line. Uh, Warren sends a man in motion. This is your second string out there right now. Snap, they're going to hand the ball off up the middle to number uh, 20. That is uh, Kale Mullins. Mullings? Uh, Kalel Mullings. I'm going to go with Kalel Mullings as the pronunciation there. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Not my team. Second and seven here for Mays. Let's see what they do here on this drive. They got a very stretched out wing line formation. Sends a man in motion. Snap Warren's looking to throw. He's about ran over. Are you trying to get them killed? Pass was intended by for Frederick Moore. It looked like the quarterback legit just about got run over by one of the defenders. Uh, you cannot touch the quarterback in the spring game. You cannot touch the quarterback in the spring game. You you don't want them getting hurt. Why the fuck are you even trying to do that? Jesus Christ almighty. Ugh, third seven. <coughs> For Mays. So let's see what they do here. Yeah, four wide out set here for Mays. Warren takes the snap, looking to throw. He's rushing the pockets. Thrown, caught. That's going to be a big gain there. 
Caught by number 43. That's going to be a big first down. That's Deacon uh, Tonielli, the tight end. Sophomore tight end with the reception there. That was a huge play. All right. Solid. Gets rushed on the pocket. Stays calm. Completes a solid pass to Tony Ellie. Okay. All right. Maze is cooking as that is already the end of the first. Again, they're just doing a running clock here. Yeah, exactly. Like if you go full spring on the quarterback, if you go full speed on the quarterback in a spring game, you're a fucking moron. You're an absolute fucking moron if you do that. So that is the uh, already the end of the first quarter. Again, we got a running clock here, and this is a pretty chill scrimmage. So we're not expecting too, too crazy of a thing. So I'm going to take a step out real quick, and I'll be back in just a second. Stay tuned. So, Nicole, it's going pretty all right. It's going pretty all right. Uh, legit, I've been working on the next video, and I got a double ear infection this week. You guys already knew I've been sick for the last, like, month and a half. Well, it had to culminate with a goddamn double ear infection. So, it's just been a bit miserable this week, I'm going to be honest. But we power through as we do. So, once again, if you're just tuning in, we're barely 23 minutes into this uh, spring game. We're already in the second quarter uh, because they do running clocks and uh, it's a scrimmage. So, again, if you want to stick around later tonight and you don't want to see me moping and pouting, um, we are going to be doing the UFL game between the Stallions and the Defenders. Top two teams, two of the top teams in the, in the uh, UFL going at it tonight at 7 p.m. Make sure you stick around and stay and uh, join me for that. So it's going to be a good one, uh, especially since I got pretty fucking wild last week watching the uh, other UFL game. So there you go. And, uh, yeah. We're still waiting for them to come back from the commercial, guys. Sorry. Let's check something real quick here. What is the score of the Battle Hawks game? I am very curious now what the score of the Battle Hawks game is. So I know they're playing right now. Hmm. Let's see here. My computer would stop being so damn shitty for five seconds. Oh, yeah. No, they're so fun. My hearing is still like half gone. I still don't have my full amount of hearing back. So if you're hearing shit in the background and I can't, and there's probably a reason why. So that's fun. Right now, I'm just waiting for my ears to pop back into place and hopefully to feel better. We'll, we'll deal with UFL later. All right, so here we go. We're about to start the second quarter now. Mays has the ball. I got the roster in front of me here, so I should be able to call out who gets the ball and when. It is a miserable-looking day in Ann Arbor. Absolutely. Last weekend, the shoe. Oh, yeah. Austin 316. You bet. It's the it's the OG one, too. All right. Uh, here we go. First and 10 for Mays. They got the ball on the 37-yard line. Snap. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle. 
and he is going to be brought down for maybe a maybe a loss. That was uh, Tavier Dunlap on the carry there, the uh, senior running back for Michigan. <laughs> You have to ask my old man that. My old man lives up in uh, very northern Michigan, actually. I go there and visit sometimes. And he's got a lovely little spot in the very north side of Michigan. Beautiful. Right off the coast of Lake Huron. That part of Michigan I could tolerate. But I got to drive through Ann Arbor to get there. My middle fingers are up the whole time. Second and 10. Warren is the quarterback. He's going to throw it. And it's going to be caught by number 18. Might be enough for a first down. That was uh, Colson Loveland, the tight end there on the reception. As I think they're going to give it to him. Yep, first and 10 for Mays. Yeah, we're already about 11 minutes. It, we're already about two minutes into the first. Uh, we're already about a minute and a half into the second quarter, I should say. They're just doing. They got a running clock going the whole time. They're not. There's no stoppages. Is they're going to do some sort of wildcat formation here? You got Warren and two receivers on the south end of the field. As a uh, direct snap's going to go to Mullings, the running back, and he'll take that ball for maybe three yards. As uh, there you go, uh, Kello Mullins, a graduate, number twenty for Michigan, on the May side. See what they do here. Second and five now for Mays. You got trips on the bottom of the screen here with a uh, man now in motion. So they're going to do a twin stack on the top side in the shotgun formation. Let's see here. Snap. Warren, he's looking to throw. He's immediately looking at number 18. He's going to catch the ball. That's going to be Colson Loveland again with the reception. Uh, Kind of close. He got close there on the first down. So if it's not first down, it's going to be third and a few inches. <laughs> now they're talking about who they lost. The only returning starter from the Michigan offense last season is Colston Loveland. Everybody else is gone. The entire Michigan offense that they had last season is fucking gone. That's incredible. Snap, Warren. Going to hand it off to Mullings. Mullings, I think he's going to have enough for the first down there. So Michigan's got a lot of questions they need to get answered um, on the offensive side of things. Due in part to the fact that 10 out of their 11 players on offense this season is going to be brand new starters. You know, they lost the entire offense, got obliterated thanks to graduation, thanks to the draft. Everybody took their uh, – Everybody took off with Harbaugh, it seems. So this is going to be a whole new Michigan team when we get to the fall. So it turns out he didn't get anything on that run. Mullings, he got tripped up short. So it's fourth and one. Snap, they're going to hand it off to Mullings again. And I think this time they will give it to him. They do. They indeed do. So it's going to be first and 10 for Mays as they continue this drive that started in the dying minutes of the first quarter as we are approaching eight minutes to go. Once again, this is a running clock scrimmage. They are not going to be – they're playing at, you know, the offensive line, defensive line, and the specialists. They're playing at just about at full speed. You do not touch the quarterback, though. Snap, Warren looking to throw, and that is out and out of the hands of Frederick Moore, incomplete. DJ, happy 420 to you as well. I forgot today is 420. Jesus Christ. I don't have any gummies or nothing. Man, fuck. You, they, they just legalized weed in Ohio, but I don't know where the fuck I can get it. They don't have it really in stores yet that you can just buy because of uh, state regulations are not fully in place. So, I don't know. We'll figure it out. If I can find a way to get some, I might talk out tonight. Who knows? Second and 10 for the Mays. They are on the 15-yard line, deep in the red zone here, trying to get a touchdown. As Warren will take it, will take the snap, hand it off to Kalel Mullins. 
who's going to get it out to about the 10 yard line. It's going to be third down and about five or six. And then I just got a notification that the Battle Hawks actually didn't start playing until just now. Uh, Battle Hawks and Showboats are playing right now on ABC. So that'll be interesting to see. City Cole's got a story for us. Down here in Texas, I saw a woman almost buy some Oreo cookies with weed in it, and I had to say those aren't for the kids. How in the fuck? How do you? Never mind. I'm not. I'm not going to ask any questions. Third and five. Warren snap, looking to throw. Still looking. Going to toss it to Mullings. Mullings swir uh, swarms out of a tackle, but. Ends up getting right back to where they started on a big loss there. It's going to be fourth down for the Mays. As I'm assuming they're going to try to kick a field goal with about five minutes, just under five minutes, just under six minutes, I should say, to go. Sack the stigma. That is the label they're going with, I guess, this season. Sack the stigma. What the fuck is sack the stigma? I mean, damn it. All right, field goal attempt for Mays. Snap good, hold good, kick is up, and it is just barely through the upright, but it is indeed a good kick. And that will give Mays some points on the board as Blue, as Blue will take over here in just a couple of moments. Now they're interviewing Blake Corum on the sideline, who just declared for the draft and is going to be in um, Detroit for the NFL draft coming up here next week. So that's going to be interesting to see where he ends up going. Cynical, following up on the story we were talking about a minute ago, literally had the plan logo on it and told her why our Oreos behind the, the uh, cashier next to a pack of smokes. Thankfully, she put two and two together. Well, no shit. <laughs> If you see food next to nicotine and tobacco products, I would assume that they are not for kids, right? Like, it should not be that hard. You know, you did your math in high school, right? So stupid. People are fucking morons. <laughs> All right. So we're about to kick it away again. For Blue this time. Blue will take the kickoff. And if they ever decide to get off this stupid fucker's face, Blake Corum. Uh, again, we're just chilling, guys. I don't have a dog in this fight, clearly. Can we get can we kick the damn ball off already? I'm sick and tired of looking at this guy. Come on, man. I know it's a spring game, but goddamn, he's not God. He's not Gandhi. He's just a running back. And I'm sure he's gonna do well in the NFL, but he's still just a running back. Ugh. All right. They finally decide to kick the damn ball off. And it's going to go into the end zone again for a touchback because this is why the XFL hybrid now exists. And they're showing off Blake Corum's perfect first pitch against the Tigers. I just want to watch football, man. Can we just watch football? I don't want to deal with this son of a bitch anymore. He made my life hell for two years. All right, here we go. First and 10 here for the blue side as we are getting back to football now. Five and a half to go in the second. Snap, they're going to hand the ball up up the middle. And he's going to pick up about three yards there on the carry. Trying to see who that was that took the ball. As number two is in a quarterback, that's Jaden Davis, the freshman. True freshman, I'm assuming, from Fort Mill, South Carolina. Jaden Davis. As he's going to get some work now after Alex Orgy. Got his 
one drive in, and uh, now we're really starting to see who's going to be doing what. So here we go, second and seven here. I don't know who carried the ball in the last carry. Sorry about that. I think it might have been Benjamin Hall. Snap, throws, caught by number eight. Uh, that is Tyler Morris again with the carrot with the reception there. And he'll take that ball out to up to where? Maybe first and ten either way. Let's see what they do on this one. Orgy's back in the game. Alex Orgy, presumed starter for Michigan this fall, is back in the game. As uh, they are trying to get Jaden Davis a little bit of work. First and ten. And they got twin stack on the bottom in the ace formation. Snap. They're going to hand it off to Tyler Morris, the wide receiver on a wide receiver jet. He's going to catch the edge a little bit, makes it out to about the 41-yard line, but we got a flag down on the play. We have a flag down on the play. Got holding on the offense. Back about 10 yards. Going to be first and 20 now for the blue side. Tyler Morris, we're going to see here. Junior wide receiver, 5'11", 185 pounds. Very interesting. Okay, so it's not first and 20, it's first and 17, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So they're going to hand that ball off again to Benjamin Hall, but he's not going to get very far at all. And we brought down behind the line of scrimmage, it's going to be second and a mile. So we're approaching two and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Second and 19 is the call there. Let's see what they do. All right, you got, uh, and that's going to be a sack. Jaden Davis came back into the game, got pressure immediately, and he gets brought down. Theoretically, for a sack, they just touched him, but still, it counts as a sack. This ain't no ballet, motherfucker. This is for real. Come on. So there you go. It's gonna be third and twenty-eight for blue. Third and twenty-eight for blue. As Mays will take a timeout, stopping the clock here with about two oh nine to go in the second quarter of this spring game here today. In Ann Arbor. Hmm. When we get to the half, I'm probably going to fuck around with my mic. See if I can get this to work properly so I can give you guys better sound quality. Because right now I bet I sound like shit. Because right now I'm using my cell phone mic. Once again, guys, we'll be back later today with the uh, UFL. As at 7 o'clock tonight, we will be doing the uh, Defenders against the Stallions in a big UFL matchup. Uh, Interconference, but uh, could really set the table and set the tone for who's going to be doing well this upcoming season as we uh, are quickly approaching the halfway point of the UFL season already, actually. As we are in week four now. And then tomorrow, uh, two teams just trying to stay alive in the uh, first UFL tank bowl as the 0 3 defender, sorry, 0 3 Roughnecks take on the 0 3 Renegades in the UFL. So be sure to tune in at 2 30 on that. That game is going to be on FS1. So, and probably for a good reason, it's on the standard broadcast. So there you go. Third and 28. Let's see what they do here. 
as uh, Jaden Davis is back in under center now, the freshman quarterback from Michigan. Snap. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle to Benjamin Hall. He's going to bounce to the outside, try to get something there. Couldn't quite get anything going. That's going to be fourth and a mile. And I think they're going to probably wind up punting the ball here. As we are at two minutes to go. And they are now, now oh, God. Juice, oh, boy. Michigan versus Texas, September 7th, will be the big noon kickoff of that day. On September 7th, Michigan will host the Texas Longhorns in the big house for big noon kickoff Saturday. That is a big game. I might wind up covering that game. We'll see what happens. That's going to be big. Two teams that were in the playoffs last season going at it. I think Texas is going to have the upper hand because they have far less turnover to deal with than they did last year, than they do with Michigan coming into this season. I pray for a big blue downfall. I think we're going to get it. There's no way they're going to run it back this year. They got way too much turnover to deal with. There's no way. Ohio State's pissed, too. Ohio State's, I don't think Ohio State's going to be able to – I don't think they're going to get past Ohio State this season. Let the burn orange run wild. I'm looking forward to that one. It's going to be a great day. We'll see what happens. I mean, you never know. You never fucking know with these things how they end up going. I mean, Texas, without a doubt, is uh, one of the favorites coming into this upcoming season to be in the national title conversation um, and to have a real chance of making a run for it. So that will be a big test early, early in the season for both for both teams. I think that's going to be week one because week zero is usually the last week of August. So week one. We're going to get a good one there as they're going to punt that ball, just trying to get something going there. And now they're doing a tail of the tape. They're really hyping up this son of a bitch. 16 national championships between the two schools. 60 college football Hall of Famers. Over almost 2,000 total wins in the, in the lifespan of these two schools. Oh, it is week two? Okay, I was close. I was close because they usually have – they got the weird ass like week zero, where they have some games play because Hawaii fucks up the whole schedule, and then you got week one, then you got week two. So, but there you go. That is going to be that'll probably wind up being a game I end up calling live. So that'll be very interesting to see. As now Mays takes over the ball from the forty yard line after the punt. So first down, and they're going to hand the ball off up the middle there. That is number 22 on the carry, uh, Tavier Dunlap. As another quarterback comes into the game, uh, Jaden Denegle. Jaden Denegle. He is a uh, junior quarterback for Michigan. Well, let's see what they do on this drive. Second and six. Timeout called by Blue. All right, let's just reset for a second here. Because, I mean, we're just chilling out. Uh, but I got to – my ears just keep wanting to fucking pop, and they just won't. Uh. Yeah, we're just chilling out right now. They they're calling it. They call it a timeout, and it's just a scrimmage. So, you know, 
We're going to get to – we're going to get there when we get there, guys. It'll be all right. Second and six with about a minute and a half to go in the second quarter, approaching halftime pretty quickly as, again, running clock for the most part. This is a scrimmage. Sends a man in motion. Snap, hands the ball up, up the middle. And that was uh, to Dunlap again on the carry. He's going to pick up about three yards maybe. So it's going to be third down. Yeah, let's see what they do here. Another timeout being called this time by Mays. They'll have one left in the in the half. And we shall see here what happens. Uh, you know, I'm I'm glad everybody's I'm glad everybody's here, but uh what did I say? One big sneeze is when your ears pop. Mine did, and it was a huge joy. I had a big sneeze earlier when we started because I'm allergic to bullshit, and it did not happen. So I'm going to have to figure something else out. Actually, hold on. Let me see. Nope, that didn't work. If you hold your nose and then try to breathe out through your nose only, it it's like it's trying to move all the pressure out but it's still not quite getting there. Like your hearing improves for like a second and then it, and then it doesn't, and then it just kind of recedes. So I don't know. I'm going to be cutting my grass here in a little bit. It's sunny and about 55 degrees outside. Perfect grass cutting weather today. So hopefully doing all that little bit of exercise. will get the uh, ears popping out third and three here. And uh, that's going to be a pass completed over the middle. For the first down, that was number 12 with the reception. And that is uh, Kendrick Bell. And they're going to do a little up-tempo now. Got about one minute to go. Ball's on the 21-yard line. And flags for days, flags for days. False starts on May's fucking shameful. But, hey, that's why we do scrimmages. Or why they do scrimmages. Uh, I'm going to see. What's the spring game schedule look like next week? Because I'm already thinking about what we can, what, what games we can cover next week as well. So I know there's going to be uh, more games uh, next Saturday. But we'll see what happens with everything there. Uh, there's even a couple tomorrow, but nothing that's being nationally broadcast. Uh, Idaho, no. Maryland's at noon next week. Uh, West Virginia at noon. Uh, Rutgers. Oregon with their Pac-12 network, and I'll get that. So I might wind up, uh, might be shit out of luck. We'll see. All right, first and 15 here for Mays. Ball is now on the 26 after backing up five yards. We got about 40 seconds to go in the second quarter as uh, quarterback is going to run out of the pocket there, try to do something. He'll run out of bounds. Well short, second down. Again, Jaden Denagle is in a quarterback for the Mays Wolverines, the junior Probably not going to be getting any playing time this season. He's probably going to wind up transferring in May, I'm assuming, especially now that there's no restrictions on transfers. I'm sure everybody heard about that one. The NCAA lifted the penalty. So now anytime the portal is open, you can transfer however many times you want without penalty. So it's about to get real crazy. Second and 13 with 35 seconds to go now. Denago trying to run out of the pocket. And they're going to say he got sacked, but hold on. We got a flag down. But either way, that's technically a sack. This ain't no ballet, motherfucker. This is for real. Come on. Let's see what the officials are saying. What's going on here? Maybe a holding call. Number 71, Link, the uh, offensive lineman there, shaking his head. Yep, going to be holding on number 71. That is the 6'6 six, six sophomore Evan Link who got busted there on the hold. Denagle's like trying to rally troops like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Come on. Uh, let's 
30 seconds left in the second quarter. Ball is now on the 38-yard uh, line. This is a pretty sloppy game if i ever seen. Snap. Denagle throws it deep. He's got a man wide open. That's going to be caught by number three, Frederick Moore, inside the 10-yard line as the clock is going to stop while they reset the chains. Probably going to be snap, probably going to snip, uh, spike the ball here as uh, they try to do something. Yep, spikes the ball. 18 seconds left in the quarter here. Mays with a chance to get a touchdown as Frederick Moore, he just walked right by both of the defenders. He ran by the safety, ran by the corner, and had nothing but open space for like a five-yard radius around him. So busted coverage there on the blue defense. You love to see that kind of production there, as they said on TV. But again, I'm not a Michigan fan. So I don't give a shit what his production is. For second and goal here for Mays after they spiked the ball to stop the clock. Snap. Denego fumbles it, and they're going to call it a sack. This ain't no ballet, motherfucker. This is for real. Come on. So there you go. Third and goal now as uh, – are they going to call another timeout? Or are they going to go to the half? What are we doing? Uh, I think we do got a timeout. Yeah, final timeout for Mays with two seconds to go in the quarter. And something tells me they're going to probably wind up kicking a field goal here. And they will. So, there you go. Third and goal. They're going to kick a field goal here from about 30 yards out. See what they do. Snap good. Kick is up. He missed it. He missed it. That kick is no good. What? Are you, are you an idiot? Just barely misses it to the left, and that is a going to be how we end the half. Score seven to three. A pretty fucking boring game, I must say. The Ohio State scrimmage was more entertaining than this. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Buckeye fan. They had more points. Granted, they gave points out for sacks and interceptions and turnovers, but it made it more entertaining. This is fucking <laughs> uh, this is boring. Okay, well, uh, with that being said, we're at the half. I'm going to step away real quick. Uh, and get a drink. So uh, I'm going to step out for a second, get another drink, and we'll be back in just a moment. Enjoy the lo-fi.
podcast one too. That's one too. One, two. One, two. One, two. All right. I think we got the microphone problem fixed. Indeed, we do. All right. So we're still at the half right now with uh, everything going on. We are seven to three into the spring game. So it's halftime. Let's shoot the shit. If you guys want. Or we could just sit here and slowly waste our time. <laughs> so. There you go. Uh, what have I seen so far that has impressed me? Uh Look, I'm not trying to be a dick. I, I I know there's some things about this game that could impress me. Um, Ginger Mahal released by WWE. Interesting. Hey, Salty Wings and Abs. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good to see you. We are in the half currently as... Uh, Blue has a 7-3 lead over Mays in the Michigan spring game. Got maybe another hour of this shit to go, and then I can stop caring about Michigan for the next couple of weeks. Um, something interesting did come up earlier this week, Michigan-wise. Hey, Kurzov, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. So... see something. Michigan football news. So the NCAA did come back with a punishment. I don't know how good of a punishment uh, at all, but is Michigan supposed to be worse next year? Yes. Out of their 11 starters, 10 are gone. Only their tight end is returning. And that tight end was – let me see something real quick here. Um, who was their tight end that's coming back? Um, Colston Loveland. He's the only player coming back from the national championship offense. So they're kind of fucked. Uh, SP, oh my God, thank you. I cannot find the game anywhere. Hey, man, appreciate it. Uh, but anyway, uh, Michigan latest with football. The NCAA did put them on a probation for... I don't think it was the uh, Stallions scandal, but I'm going to double check. So they placed the Wolverines under a three-year probation and an undisclosed fine for recruiting violations that occurred under the tenure of Jim Harbaugh. Um, that is only for recruiting penalties. It does not affect anything that happened with the Colin, Colin Stallions scandal. So we have to wait and see what that punishment is going to wind up being. I'm going to try something real quick here. 
So I'm gonna mute this guy. This. And how's that sound? How's that sound? Don't know. Don't care. Okay. So I, I don't really know what to say at the moment. Uh, besides that, I think we're just going to run with it the rest of the way like this. I would rather just not. Yeah. I'm just not going to. Not as clear. Okay. Well, then I'm going to bring my normal mic back up. And I'm going to mute this one. And we're going to do that. All right. All right. So we're going to continue on with the mic. And hopefully it's going to stop fucking up the rest of the way. As everyone's having a nice little party celebrating their little national championship with all the rings. They got a total of four fucking rings. One for the Big Ten title. One for making the playoff. One for winning the Rose Bowl. And then one for winning the Big Kahuna itself, the national championship. I'm not a fan of the multiple rings thing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Buckeye fan and Michigan won it. I think in general it's kind of silly to get three rings for the playoffs. Like if you if you make it to the playoffs and like when they get to this when they get to the 12 teams uh starting this December and we are getting through each bowl game, are they still going to do this shit? <laughs> I hope, fucking hope not. Damn. They are pretty rings. I'll say that much. Got tons of stones on those. There you go. We're right now we're still in halftime, so I'm just waiting for everything to come back on TV. And right now we're kind of shooting the shit. But again, some the latest going on with Michigan. Um, another piece of information. So I mentioned how Michigan got a three-year uh, probation and fine. Um, Michigan apparently left a permanent mark on Jim Harbaugh because he also got a tattoo. Yeah. I got to see this shit. Uh Apparently, he told his players that if they went 15 and 0, he would get a tattoo. Oh, wow. That is the most plain and basic tattoo I've ever seen. It's just a block M for Michigan. Wow. That is pretty pathetic. But I guess if you've never had a tattoo before and you get it on your shoulder, well, there you go. And if you don't believe me, you fucks. I'll show you. And there it is. Oh, hold on. The tattoo. Look how fucking small that shit is. <laughs> Just a block M, 15 and 0 underneath. Really, really plain and basic. Oh, well. So that was interesting. All right. We're going to go ahead and go back to our regularly scheduled programming, hopefully. 
as I am still waiting very patiently for half time to finish up. So, uh, yeah, I know, bro. That, 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 like, he got a little drop of ink on his shoulder. Man, that ain't shit. They could, he could have gotten something like big, and I would have respected the hell out of him for it. Yeah, it's not even a good M. Yeah, it's the most basic fucking tattoo you could possibly get. Like, he could have gotten, like, the actual, like, logo. He could have gotten the actual logo. He could have gotten something. He could have gotten the national title trophy with it. Nah. No, not even, not a fucking, he drew it himself and then put it on his shoulder. That took, like, five minutes of thought. Like, that's only, that's going to be the only tattoo you ever get, Jim. Go big. You got the money. You can afford to get you can afford to get some of the best tattoo artists in the world to do that for you. And you just you went to a local Michigan shop and just got it drawn on you real quick and went for it. Like that's that, that's that's sad. But you know, if you're an old man and you've never had a tattoo in your life, I, I guess you can't get too crazy. But like I got two on my arm. And I, they got, they took a lot more thought and uh, shit than whatever the fuck Jim Harbaugh did. And I, and that was just for my kids. I'm going to get a lot more soon. So there you go. I'm actually, hmm. I wonder if I can get one next week. We'll see. All right. Again, we're waiting for halftime to finish up, so I apologize for the uh, lack of a discussion here, but I'm just I, – I really – I'm really not happy. I don't, I don't want to do this right now. I don't want to talk about Michigan. I, I already had talked about them enough during the fucking football season. If I don't have – this is the last time I'm talking about Michigan besides the national championship video – until the regular season starts back up and we get to conference championship previews and the likes. So there you go. Huh. We're about to come out of halftime. So we're back from commercial finally. Players making their way onto the field. The big house is not even halfway full. Ohio Stadium last weekend had like 80,000 people in the stands. I would say you got about 40 or 50 here, maybe. And in a stadium that is built for up to 110,000 people, that is, it looks really cavernous. I guess you'd say. Hmm. All right. So next weekend, we got some more spring football coming up, but this weekend's kind of the last big uh, blitz, I guess you could say, of uh, big football games for spring football. Uh, so next weekend's going to be the last real weekend of spring ball, and then they're going to call it. You'll have a game with Washington on May 3rd, and you'll have two FCS teams going at it on May 4th, but that is the end of it. Everybody else has already played their spring games. So like today, uh, you got a massive amount of spring games going on. Obviously, you got Michigan right now. Notre Dame just kicked off on Peacock. Illinois kicks off in an hour on Big Ten Network. Uh, you got Michigan State on Big Ten Network. Uh, let's see, Texas on Longhorn Network in about an hour, Wake Forest at 2 o'clock in about an hour, Colorado State, North Carolina, or Oregon State, USC, 
Boise State, Oklahoma, Stanford, Florida State at four, uh, California, Duke, South Carolina, and Syracuse. All the big names are – the last of the big names are doing their shit today. And then you got a couple of them playing tomorrow, but I'm not going to do that, obviously. And then you got one more big bash of them next weekend, but that's about it. So here we go. We're back from commercial. We're back from halftime, finally. And we're off in the big house as blue. Maze is going to fair catch this at the nine. I hate fair catches on kickoffs, man. It's so fucking annoying. You're there in spirit. All right, man. All right. So uh, uh, Maze will receive. He'll start on offense. As again, 12 minute quarters and a running clock means we'll be done probably within the next 45 minutes. Awesome. I got grass to cut. First and 10 here. Snap. Uh, handoff up the middle to number 22. That is going to be Tavier Dunlap. Got Jaden Denagle back in at quarterback here for Michigan. Second and six. Sends a couple of guys in motion. You got uh, four wideouts set here on the shotgun. Snap. Denego looking to throw. He's going to dump it off over the middle, but it's going to be deflected at the line. And, uh, is that incomplete? I thought that was incomplete. For whatever reason, they're treating that like that's a fumble. Was that a fumble? Hang on. That's a forward pass. I'm not calling that a fumble. Like it was bad at the line of scrimmage, but that thing got thrown. I mean, for the effort, Imeric uh, Komba, the edge rusher, took it downfield, but that, that can't be a fumble, right? False alarm, that's right. Okay, yeah. So it's it's not a fumble. It's an incompletion. Yeah. Coach just saw that. He was like, yeah, sorry, guys. We don't have official review booths in this one, but, yeah, there you go. Spring ref ball. <laughs> Spring ref ball. You're goddamn right. All right, so they're going to reset here. Third and six. Ball is on the 29-yard line for Mays after a premature celebration by Blue. Snap. Denego looking to throw again. Still looking to throw, running out of the pocket, running out of time. That's going to be caught and intercepted and fumbled back to Mays. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so we had a interception and a fumble. So let's do this right. You want this ball? You want to take it from me. Take it from me, baby. It's mine. What the fuck that was, but there you go. Like, how the fuck? <laughs> okay, so that was uh, a lot. So it's first down. After all that, it's still first down for Mays if they're going to hand the ball off at the middle of the field for a gain of a few yards. Ten minutes to go in the third. Wow. I can't believe that happened. A near what everybody everybody thought was a fumble, and then it turned out to be an incomplete pass. I don't know how they thought it was a fumble. Immediately into interception, fumble back to the offense. Like, what the fuck, bro? Second and four for Mays. Ball is on the 36 and a half yard line. 
Denegle, snap, hands the ball off to number 22. He's going to take it to the outside. He'll be brought down for a gain of nothing. That was uh, Dunlap on the carry once more. Dunnagle, Dunnagle, or whatever his name, I shit. I guess, I guess you're saying that he sucks. I mean, I'm an Ohio State fan, so I think all these players suck, but that's beside the point. Third and six here for Mays. Ball is backed up to about the 35-yard line after a gain of basically nothing on the last one. Denegle snap. Looking to throw. He's going to take it himself upfield, up the middle. And where are they going to call him down? Can't touch the quarterback in spring games, so I think they're going to call him about two yards short. So it's going to be fourth and about one or two, one and a half, two yards. Yeah, fourth and two here for Mays, and looks like they're going to go for it. So prepare thyself for potential turnover on downs here. That might finally end this godforsaken drive. You got stacked trips on the offensive line there. They're going to hand the ball off up in the middle, up to the outside, number 41. That was Bryson Kuzdal on the carry, but he goes nowhere in hurry, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. For the blue. I don't believe it. That kind of shit is just unacceptable. So there you go. We're finally getting some fucking plays worthy of calling this a football game. But there you go. Turnover on downs for Mays. Blue will take over possession with 749 to go in the third. Benny, the Rolling Stone, one, the Rolling Stoner. I like that name. Orgy will probably start unless we get someone better in the portal. I agree. I don't think you're going to get anybody better in the portal right now, though. As a uh, new quarterback in for Blue, as they're going to hand the ball off up the middle to number 28. Uh, uh, number eight for the Blue side. Number 28 is Benjamin Hall. The quarterback right now is Jaden Davis, the true freshman. And again, running clock, so pretty quick quarters here. We should be done in about an hour or less at this point, probably the last 45 minutes to 30 minutes now. Second and five, ball is on the Mays 34-yard line. They're going to hand the ball up up the middle again to Benjamin Hall, and he's going to be stonewalled at the line for absolutely no gain. It'll be third and about six for Blue. In a very boring, low-scoring affair of a spring game here in Ann Arbor. Ohio State probably spoiled me. Ohio State had a great spring game last week. Tons of scoring. Tons of uh, great plays. Ibuka's one-handed catch last Saturday still kills me. That shit was just you, – he did not deserve to do that to the fucking defender. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. And then this game has been really slow and really boring. Third and five here for the Maze and Blue. Um, Blue, I should say. As they just handed off to Benjamin Hall again, and he is eaten alive. That was number 33, Dominic Nichols, the edge rusher, true freshman edge rusher with the tackle. Wow. Way to get in there, bud. There you go. Davis looks decent. Got to remember he's young. He's absolutely young. He's a freshman. He's got at least another three to four years of work ahead of him. And I think in the next – I think as he matures and he continues to mold himself in this system, he'll become a good quarterback for them and down the road. Obviously right now, no. Fourth and seven, they're just going to go for it. Snap. Uh, Davis looked pump fakes. Tosses it downfield. And that is – Almost caught, intended for number 81, Peyton O'Leary. 
but instead, it's not a three and out, it's a four and out. I don't believe it. That kind of shit is just unacceptable. It really is. But it's a spring game, so what are you going to fucking do? We're just goofing off, I guess. O'Leary got two hands down and just could not survive. It bounced off. So he caught it like this, and then he was bringing it down, and he brought it down on his own damn helmet. And Davis had another guy wide open heading for the corner of the end zone, but he just didn't see it. He was on the other side of the field. And he just couldn't see him. That could have been – man. All right, so Denagle's back in, and it definitely looks like Orgy and Warren are your number one and number two starters. Your number one is Alex Orgy. Warren, your other quarterback, looks like he's going to be your backup. So these are just getting your three and four some work because they're going to hand the ball up up the middle. Mays now has possession after the turnover, and that was uh, number 22 on the carry for Mays. Uh, well, that was Dunlap on the carry. Forgive me. So, second down. They're talking about Wink Martindale, the D coordinator for the Wolverines this season, who just came in from the New York Giants. Been in the NFL since 2010. Just came back to college for the first time since 2003. So, that's going to be interesting. Second and four. Snap, Dunlap. Fakes the carry. They're going to throw it to the outside. That's Frederick Moore with the wide receiver jet. And he'll bounce out of bounds after a hard hit out of bounds. My God, he got hit in the fucking helmet. Frederick Moore just got tagged by the blue squad. They are taking the gloves off now. I think you got a lot of uh, guys on this team now at this point that are uh, probably just trying to find a starting spot and trying to make a big play. But, man, number 31 for blue. Uh, Nico Andre Ghetto, I guess you pronounce that. Uh, just tagged his ass for going out of bounds. Any other game, that might be a flag almost. But it's gonna be first to ten, regardless for May. Snap Dunlap is uh gonna take the ball upfield for about four or five yards. Gonna be second down there as they just cross the 50 yard line. They're not fucking around now. Earlier in the game, obviously, you, you got your all your starters out there. Don't want anybody getting hurt. Now you're getting down to your reserves and your uh, practice squad guys and your walk-ons that are just trying to find a spot to start. So you're probably going to see some more hard hit in action here as we get into the uh, dying minutes of this spring game. As they're going to hand the ball off up the middle again to Dunlap. Dunlap's getting a lot of work in this drive. Tevier Dunlap, again, the senior running back for Michigan on the May side for this spring game. That's going to be uh, – that carry by Dunlap was enough to get a first down, so they are still driving. They don't have the yellow line out on the field right now, so it's hard for me to say. All right, they're gonna fake. They're gonna hand off to Dunlap again. This time, the defense just swallows his ass up, and that was number fifty-eight for Blue, uh, Giovanni El Hadi. I'm sorry, that probably wasn't it. That, that was uh, Breon Ismail, the edge rusher, with the tackle there. I'll give him the credit. Second and thirteen for Mays. They are into blue territory now. And again, your quarterback right now for Mays is Jaden Denagle. He is two for five, 44 yards and a pick in this spring game. So nothing too good here. Second and 13 snap. Denagle looking to throw. And that's going to be incomplete unless they give him the sack call. I don't think they will. No, they're going to call it a sack. So you know what that means. This ain't no ballet, motherfucker. This is for real. Come on. 
All right, well, I'm going to give him a sack because fuck it. He tagged him right before he threw the ball. I'm going to say that's a sack. Third and 13 now. We're coming up on a minute left in the third quarter. And this May's offense is – both offenses are sputtering right now. Again, you got a lot of reservists in at the moment. Denego looking to throw. He will throw it. It's behind this man, incomplete, intended for number 81, Hogan Hansen, the tight end, the six foot five freshman tight end. But it's incomplete. It's going to be fourth and 13 now. And nobody's punted the ball. But it looks like Denego's coming off the field, and they will indeed elect to punt the ball now. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. As I just remembered, I completely forgot to change my timeouts. Let me do that. It's going to be fair caught at the 11 yard line. So blue is in deep. Now, again, the new coach for Michigan this season is going to be Sharon Moore, who, out of all the coaches on the coaching staff last season, only four coaches remain after Harbaugh left. So not only is the entire uh, personnel on your team new, basically, but so is your coaching staff. So this is a all whole new Michigan team with only a handful of holdouts from the Harbaugh era. Very interesting. So Blue has the ball. Going to be first and 10 as Davis is looking to throw. And he's going to be called incomplete there after after the pass. It's going to be second and 10. For the Blue squad. And that's the end of the quarter. Played three here in Ann Arbor. Pretty boring affair, except for a little bit of chaos there at the, about uh, a couple of minutes ago with the uh, interception fumble and a couple of sacks. Uh, 7 3 as Mays is trailing blue going to the final 12 minutes of this spring game. Remember, 12 minute quarters in the spring game. You don't want to go full fucking throttle. Uh. <sighs> Once again, if you are new here, we will be covering UFL tonight at 7 o'clock. We will be covering D.C. versus Birmingham in what is probably going to be the game of the weekend for the UFL. Got two of the top teams in the league going at it for supremacy. Birmingham, the last unbeaten left. DC, two and one on a two game winning streak right now. Uh, currently, we do have the Battle Hawks playing against the Showboats. And uh, I'm actually kind of curious to see what the score of that game is. So let me see what it is real fast. Let's see what the game of that score of that game is. St. Louis, holy shit. They're up 17 to 6 on Memphis right now. God damn. God damn. Well, no, what I'm watching when the spring game's over with. You know what? We're fucking around with this. Why not? Memphis is inside the red zone. So I'm going to pull a Scott Hansen in. We're going to turn our eyes here to St. Louis for a second as Memphis is going to hand the ball off up the middle. And that dude's going to get a touchdown, I think, maybe. Or is it a fumble? We got to say we got the Battle Hawks saying they recovered the football, but that's a touchdown for Memphis. <laughs> Darius Victor with the rushing touchdown brings the game to within five points for the Showboats. As you got a fully packed out St. Louis uh, dome there. God damn it! Why did I have to cover Michigan today? <laughs> All right, Victor. Yeah, that's a touchdown. All right. Well, that was fun. Got to watch the touchdown of that game. We got to go back to Michigan now. Sorry. We'll cover UFL tonight, I promise.
Uh, let me see some real fast. Hmm. Okay. So I might have a slight problem with the fucking game tonight. Um. Ah. Uh, really, Fox? You're gonna pull this on me? Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Okay. So. My local Fox affiliate is broadcasting. I forgot they're doing two games at once, but they're going to be broadcasting the Brahmas and the Panthers game. I'm going to need to figure that out. I'm going to need to figure that one out because I'm not watching Brahmas and Panthers again. Well, they haven't played yet, but I'm not going to watch Panthers again. I've been watching too much Panthers. I know they're Michigan, so Ohio, Michigan, whatever. I don't want to watch Michigan anything. God damn it. That can't be right. Really? Oh, you got to be shitting me. Oh, son of a bitch. I was really looking forward to the fucking defenders. And, ah. All right, got to focus on this. Third and seven here for Blue. Sorry about that. Snap, caught by number 17. And that's going to be enough for the first down. Uh, the caught, catch was made by Marlon Klein, the tight end. Fuck, I can't watch battle. I can't watch Defenders and Stallions. What the fuck? I'll worry about it later. I gotta focus on this one for now. We got a full 15 minute fourth quarter. Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck you, Sharon Moore. All right. Uh, first and 10 for Blue. Snap. Ball's on the 25 yard line. They're gonna get about a couple of yards out of that. Gonna be second down on that one. Uh, okay snap handoff up the middle and then it's going to be a gain of about four yards for the blue actually yeah something around that so i was just doing my research and i feel like a damn moron the uh, Stallions and Brahmas are – the Stallions game and the Brahmas game is playing at the same time, but they're both on Fox, so it depends on what market you're in. And thanks to the Panthers, I'm in the Michigan Panthers market somehow. So that changes things for tonight. I'm going to need to do some thinking and figure out how the fuck I'm going to do this. Third and five for the blue as Alex Orgy is actually back in at quarterback and he's going to overthrow his man and that is incomplete. Fourth down. God, that really pisses me off. Hmm. You can blow it one game on FS1. That's fucking ridiculous. 
All right, fourth and five, and uh, Blue is going to punt the ball. And it is away. I mean, I don't mind doing the fucking Brahmas and Panthers games. It's just not what I was wanting to do. Not what I was hoping for, actually. But maybe I could try to cover both games. Let's we'll see. <laughs> All right. We are well and in deep into the fourth quarter now, so we're just kind of trying to see how quick we can wrap this sucker up. Pretty chill game today. So it'll be first and 10 for the Maze on the 30 yard line. As it looks like Warren is back in at quarterback for the Mays. And they're going to hand the ball to the middle. He's going to stay up. Number 22 with a big-ass carry there. That was Tevier Dunlap, who's had himself a pretty decent afternoon for the Mays. And that'll be enough for a first down. So there you go. They just got done interview, interviewing J.J. McFuck you. First and 10, balls on the 42-yard line for the Mays. You got Warren in at quarterback, uh, Davis Warren for the Mays. He's got a man open but throws it way behind him. Intended for Kendrick Bell, the wide receiver, and uh, that's going to bring up second and 10. Uh, Warren's had a pretty decent afternoon. Um Oh, God, he's going to flash his fucking bling, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's flashing all the damn rings, all of his Michigan rings and his high school state championship ring, I'm assuming. So there you go. Uh, second and 10 now for the Mays. Balls on the 42. Got 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and they're playing it by normal rules now, so it's not going to be a running clock. And they're going to – big run here for Dunlap. Another big run, and he gets it all the way out across midfield down to the 42-yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Mays as suddenly they are starting to get a little bit of momentum going here, potentially to take the lead. See if they can get it done here. But Dunlap's looking really goddamn good at running back here for, for Michigan, like. He's had himself a hell of a game. 11 rushes for 58 yards. Considering he's got to split his time with everybody else, that's pretty decent. All right, first and 10 here on the 42-yard line for the Maze, and they're going to play action. They're going to go deep. He's got a man in the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Kendrick Bell. Off of a fucking bomb from Davis Warren. Jesus Christ. The defender never even had a chance. Yeah, go back. Woo! Who can stop me? Tell me. Who can stop me? What? Yeah. Woo! So there you go. Uh, the corner bit in a little bit and lost sight of his, of his uh, target, it looks like. He had him step for step, but... Warren was able to put that ball right where it needed to be for the big touchdown. So there you go. Lining up now for the extra point. Snap good. Holds down. Up and completed. It's good. So there you go. 10-12 to go now. And finally, a little bit of fireworks in this spring game. Davis Warren completes Mays' only touchdown pass for the game on a huge 42-yard bomb to Kendrick Bell, the sophomore wide receiver.
I'm just looking at this replay again. I just want to know how Nichols, the uh, corner on that play, lost sight of him. He started looking at the ball, and he, he was looking back. Bell cut up a little bit, get, created some space, and well, there you go. So what a fucking play there. I guess they're doing a standard fourth quarter for something about getting real condition, game condition experience, random guess. I mean, I don't think you're wrong, Kurzov. I don't think you're wrong at all. I think you're actually right, but still, it's like if you wanted to have a real game experience, you'd I, I think actually you're about on point because Alex Orgy is coming back into the game now. So you got your one number one and number two quarterbacks on the roster. Um they started the first quarter and they just burned through that some bitch with no stoppages at all. Second quarter, they had a couple stoppages here and there. Third quarter, you didn't really have any. And now the fourth quarter, you're getting your top guys coming back in for one final big uh big game there. So I mean, I guess, shit. Don't know what to say, honestly, but Orgy's in. So here we go. Mays has the ball. They're going to hand the ball off up the middle, and that's going to be number 28, Benjamin Hall with the carry. That's going to be enough for a first down as the blue side is going to start kind of trying to get some momentum back here to maybe retake the league, get a little bragging rights on the team. And, uh, I mean, Orgy is what he is, three for six, 24 yards. Hasn't really played a whole lot today, but he's definitely probably going to be the starter. I don't see why he wouldn't be at this point, to be frank. So here we go, first and ten now, snap, man in motion. They're going to hand the ball up to Hall again, and he's going to be brought down for a loss of about a yard or two. It's going to bring up second down for the blue team. Sorry, it wasn't a loss. It looked like it was a loss from my Spanish point, but it'll be second and nine, actually. And once again, guys, as you are joining in, we've got 13 people watching right now. I appreciate you all being here. If you have any questions about this game or any other games or any other football questions, feel free to drop it in the chat. And I'll answer them no problem. Ball's on the 39-yard line for blue. Man in motion. Got a tight formation here. And they're going to hand the ball off up the middle to Benjamin Hall. He's going to take it all the way out to about the 47-yard line as uh, it'll be third third down, maybe. No, I don't think so. I think it will. It's going to be third and shorter, first down. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm allergic to Michigan bullshit. Third and two is the call. And uh, he's the, his offensive line over here, not giving him too much space, but Benjamin Hall is just making his own way. All right, we got an I formation, classic I formation here for Blue on third and two. And it, Hall is going to scramble his way for maybe a yard or an, and a half. It's going to be close. Let's see where they mark it. Benjamin Hall getting some work in on the running back side. So right now, Tavier Dunlap, Benjamin Hall, they've been getting a lot of the grunt work on the running back side today. Both have done pretty good, in my opinion. Especially Hall. He's just breaking tackles. Dunlap's really good at finding himself some space. And Hall, he has just been powering his way through. And it's fourth and one, but they are going to go for it. Snap. They're going to hand it off to Hall again. And he is going to be brought down behind the line and gobbled up. And you know what that means? A fucking turnover on downs. I don't believe it. That kind of shit is just unacceptable. So there you go. Smash your guy, 1020, allergic to Michigan BS, LOL. As a fellow Ohio State fan, couldn't agree more. Hey, OH, buddy. We're going to get them this year. Appreciate you being here, man. So, first and 10 now for Mays after the turnover on downs. And uh, uh, after a really good start by Blue, they just die at midfield. 
They just kept handing the ball off to Benjamin Hall, trying to see if he can continue to just absolutely bulldoze his way through that line. And eventually they caught up with it. I.O., you're goddamn right. All right, so it looks like Warren is back in. Davis Warren back in at quarterback for Mays, the number two quarterback. He's going to hand it off to Dunlap again for a gain of about a yard or two, bringing up second down. Ball is on about the 44, 43-yard line. Davis Warren's stats for this game, 5 for 8 for 88 yards and a touchdown. He's definitely got better stats than Orgy, but I still think Alex Orgy is going to be your starting quarterback comes fall. Um, just from everything I'm hearing in scouting report-wise, he's just a better guy. Uh, he's also a junior, so he's got another year ahead of him if he doesn't declare for the draft, which he probably would. Warren Davis is a senior quarterback, so I don't know. You could kind of go either way here. Michigan's going to have a bit of a quarterback battle going into fall camp. And there's a the flag. A flag down on Mays or Blue. Let's see what the call is. Is it going to be false start or what? Here's your full Michigan schedule for those of you that give a fuck. Fresno State's going to open them up on August 31st. Big game against Texas at home. On September 7th, week two, another big game against USC on the 21st September, another big game at Washington on October 5th, and then they got another game against Oregon in October. That's going to be a big one. So you got a bunch of big games on that schedule for Michigan. Not going to be easy. Second and 13, uh, it looks like the flag was on Mays. Warren looking to scramble out of the pocket, finds enough space, gets it off to his wide receiver. That's more with the catch. He's going free. 20, 15, 10, 5. That is a touchdown for Mays. Frederick Moore with the catch, taking it to the house. Second straight touchdown pass for Davis Warren on two drives. Dare I say, should he be the starter? Yeah, I'm going to come back. Woo! Who can stop me? Tell me. Who can stop me? What? Yeah. Woo! That was a beautiful little play there. Moore caught it on the on the uh, south side of the field, runs north. It's a great block on the edge there by Kendrick Bell, the wide receiver, which frees him up to go all the way to the house. Makes Kumoba, Kumoba miss, and there's Bell right there with a great block on the edge that frees up Moore to go all the way to the end zone. You love to see that kind of thing. I don't care who you are. That's just a beautiful football play. I'll give the Michigan Wolverines respect there, as the extra point is indeed good. So, Alex Orgy, what are you going to do to respond to that? I mean, that's just I, – I'm, I hate Michigan with a passion, but I will put – game respects game, right? I will respect the fact that Kendrick Bell threw a great block there on the edge to get Frederick Moore into the end zone. He's got two catches for 81 yards now and a touchdown. So he's putting in some work. Kendrick Bell also got himself a touchdown in the game and a great block. So you'd love to see that. The physicality is definitely there. And then Davis Warren. I mean, uh, Orgy needs to be a little nervous after seeing that, uh, I would think. The senior quarterback showing the experience there, making space in the pocket, getting free enough to get a good touchdown out of that. So, <sighs> Steven, Steven, the helmet colors are backwards. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. <laughs> hey, look, I don't, if you're a Michigan fan watching this, I'm not going to ban you. I appreciate you being here and saying hello. It's good to see everybody enjoying the stream. And, uh, Steven, you know, We'll see you in November, okay, bud? Six minutes to go in the fourth. As uh, Blue is probably going to go a little up-tempo, you would think. Donovan Edwards is just walking around the sideline. He's done playing for the day. Their running back is uh, calling it. So let's see who's in at quarterback. Is it Orgy again? I'm assuming it is. As he sends a man in motion, and it is Alex Orgy in at quarterback. He's going to throw the ball off, but it's going to be caught by number 83 in the middle of the field for a good gain. That was Zach Marshall, the tight end, sophomore tight end with the reception there. 
as now blue is going to go a little up tempo and orgy takes the snap throws it again this time it's going to be caught by marlon klein the tight end junior tight end and that's going to be a first down there for blue we're going to continue to go up tempo i want to care about the band i'm not even sub to you lol banning people is for little girls that hate the truth okay not banning you <laughs> You're just over here expressing your support for your team. I'm cool with it. We'll see you in November, like I said. Don't worry. Although, I would appreciate a sub if you're so inclined. Snap. Orgy looking to throw. Hot again. It's Klein with the reception. And he'll be brought down for a solid gain. And he is hurt, I think. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a little banged up. That was Marlon Klein with the catch as survives the catch, makes it all the way to the ground, and it looks like he got rocked in the back of the head there after the catch. So eh, it's a spring game. You hate to see that kind of thing. You want these guys to play hard, obviously, but you don't want to hurt your teammate. Yeah, he's pointing at the back of his neck, so I think he just – I think he, I think when he got hit in the back of the head, he just his head rocked forward a little bit too quickly, and it just probably screwed a muscle up there. So he'll probably be done for the rest of this game. We got four and a half to go in the fourth quarter now. As Orgy trying to get something going here, looking deep, and he's going to throw it between two defenders, incomplete, dangerous throw, intended again for Zach Marshall, who caught a pass earlier on this drive. But uh, yeah, just trying to thread the needle there, couldn't get anything really going. Orgy. Trying to pull something out here. It's funny. It's funny to see what the reaction is with Orgy as he's uh, trying to develop a drive here. He definitely looks a little uncomfortable. He looks a little rattled right now. Third and three. Balls on the 47-yard line. Snap. Orgy looking to throw again, obviously. Runs out of the pocket. Has a defender chasing him. Still running. He's going to be just short, runs out of bounds, about two yards short of the first down marker. So it's going to be fourth and two. I would imagine they're going to go for it here. Point that you guys spent $30 million in NIL just to lose to Michigan again. Yeah, that is funny. I want Ryan Day's head on a fucking pike after that. I won't lie to you. You beat us. You beat us a couple years in a row now. I get it. I saw the sign at WrestleMania that's been like X number of days since Ohio State beat Michigan. I get it. You guys deserve to talk all the shit. Just be prepared for November when we be beat your fucking ass. Fourth and two, they are going to go for it. Sends a man in motion. Orgy trying to do a quick pass off. And that's caught. And it's going to be brought down at the 42-yard line. That was uh, Jalen Hoffman, it looks like, with the reception there. I appreciate your passion too, Stephen. I appreciate your passion. That's why we love this game so much. We can be passionate about it. And I will let a Michigan fan come in here and say whatever he likes as long as he's not trying to hurt anybody. And you're cool, dude. Just like I find it funny how he, after Harbaugh wins a national title, he decides to take his shit and go home to L.A. and take half the coaching staff with him. Plus 10 out of your 11 offensive players are fucking gone this season. So have fun with the rebuild, but glad you're here. And that's a sack. Sack on orgy. This ain't no ballet, motherfucker. This is for real. Come on. You're not supposed to touch the quarterback. So he's probably going to get chewed out later for actually bringing him down, but it was an incidental contact thing. So we'll see what happens there. Michigan is stacked. I They might be. They might be. But, again, 10 out of your 11 offensive players are gone that started in the national championship game. That's going to cause you all to slip at some point. And you got to play Texas week two. I don't know about you all, but that's pretty early to have such a big game. Uh, that's going to be a real test. If you beat Texas week two – then I'm going to say that y'all are going to be dangerous this year. That's going to be the test because the Longhorns, they're coming back 
better than last year. They didn't lose as many personnel at all to the draft and to graduation. Plus, they have the same coaching staff, and they're not going to be on probation. So that game against the Longhorns, it's going to be the real test right there. If you all beat the Longhorns, it's going to be – it's going to be a long season for us Ohio State fans, I feel like, again. But we'll see how it plays out. Third and ten. Stap, Orgy, looking to throw. Caught again. And that will be a first down for the blue. As that was number 83. I keep forgetting his damn name, Zach Marshall, with the catch. Like how you lose to Washington, LOL. Well, you know, can't win them all. We lost to Mizzou, actually, in the Cotton Bowl, but beside the point, Mizzou's actually going to be a pretty strong team as well themselves this year. Uh, but again, Ohio State, the reason why we lost to Mizzou, primarily, we lost everybody that was good to the transfer portal. We can't, You can't deny that. Second and five, Orgy looking to throw again, and that'll be overthrown slightly. Intended for number 81, O'Leary, incomplete. I think commentator on whoever the hell I think Jake Butts on commentate on commentary, uh, basically talking about how you could possibly have two losses and still hit the playoffs. I mean, technically, yeah, you probably could, depending on how shit the conference is. That pass is completed to Dale Chesson, the wide receiver there. Okay, Steven, now you're just being mean, man. Like, of course they cared. Of course they did. They just didn't have enough. They didn't have the better players that day. That's all it was. Mizzou was just better that game. I'll admit that. Orgy gets a pass off to number 17. That's going to be caught inside the 10-yard line down at the 5. And that'll be uh, Marlon Klein with the reception. And we have hit two minutes to go. And I guess we are going to get a somewhat of a two-minute warning here or a timeout. I didn't see if there was a timeout call, but I do notice now there's time, two timeouts left on the screen. So there you go. Now Michigan's interviewing their uh, defensive back, uh, Will Johnson, All-American. I'm not going to deny this. Michigan has a lot of great players. They're going to have they just have a lot of turnover. And as a lot of fans of the of team of college football teams know, when you have a lot of turnover coming into a new season, there's going to be some bumps in the road. So that's why it's good to play your FCS, your slaughter games. I guess you could say. Um, you want to play those first before you play any tough competition. The fact that they got to play Texas week two is just going to be a massive test. Um, hopefully they don't look ahead too far and they get tripped up by Fresno State, but I doubt that, to be honest. Those who stay will be champions. Hey, if you say so, Stephen. And once you're champions... You apparently everybody leaves apparently, <laughs> just because everybody left. Everybody left, man. You won the natty, good for you. Orgy takes the snap, high snap, throws it for the end zone. Tip, did complete. Just under two minutes left. As we are now on second, third, and one. It looks like actually, third and one. Yeah, Stephen, you're not wrong. It happens in all sports. You're not wrong. It really happens frequently in college, though. Obviously, as there's another timeout by Blue. College, it happens. You know, you're guaranteed to have something like that happen every three years almost. I mean, I don't know how Ohio State's going to honestly look. We had to rebuild, too, a little bit because we lost a lot of good players to the portal, going into the Cotton Bowl, and then a few other good players. We lost Marvin Harrison Jr., for example, to the draft. Uh, I know we got a Buka back, so our wide receivers should be fine, but... Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Big Ten's going to look completely different, not just because of the fact that um, – don't remind me about the running back coach fleeing the north. I still hate that. <laughs> it's going to be a completely different Big Ten, I feel like, this year. We could see one or two different teams in the Big Ten championship because I there's a chance Penn State could roll up on both of us and – 
take it there. Oregon is looking really goddamn good. Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens when they get to Indianapolis, but it's going to be a very tough conference this year. As that pass is going to be completed at the five, it's going to be fourth down for blue, and you know they're going for it. Minute 41 to go. Orgy under center, snap, takes the shotgun, I should say. Orgy, scramble, 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 looking for a lane. And he'll walk in for a touchdown, but he's limping. He's limping. Yeah, I'm going to Woo! Who can stop me? Stop me! Who can stop me? What? Yeah! Woo! Yeah, Orgy limped all the way to the end zone there. He broke free for the touchdown, but he limped all the way. Give me a second here. Let's see what happened with Orgy. So he started to take off, and I don't know what happened, but he just started limping right after he cut down field to go to the end zone. Finished the run. I think it was that initial push off with the leg, and just something did not something does not look right with Alex Orgy. Something's wrong. Tweaked his knee, it looks like. So, hopefully he's not hurt. I'd hate – I don't like Michigan, but I obviously don't want anybody getting hurt. If I beat Michigan in a game, for example, I don't want to beat Michigan just because of a uh, technicality with a quarterback being out injured or whatever. I'd rather have two teams go into it healthy, come out of it healthy with the better team winning. And, uh, okay, so I'm just now realizing this. They're not calling it a touchdown. That was actually a turnover. They called Alex Orgy down. Where is Sax? So. This ain't no ballet, motherfucker. This is for real. Come on. I don't believe it. That kind of shit is just unacceptable. Fuck, I don't know, man. It's a spring game. So Mays has the ball. Deep inside their own territory with about a minute and a half to go. And you got to think they're just going to run the time out here and just end this son of a bitch. I hope Orgy's okay. I really, I jit like, there's a lot of bad Buckeye fans and f sports fans in general that uh, must be just fucking shitty. I don't want anybody getting hurt. In a football game. It's part of the game, but I don't want anybody getting hurt. And they're going to take knees. They're going to run this out. So, all right. That is all she wrote for this spring game. And it appears that the final score will be with about a minute left. Uh, 17 to 7. Mays beats Blue. And... I'm going to say this right now. Davis Warren, he looks like the superior quarterback on that field today. I know everybody was talking up about Alex Orgy. The senior quarterback, Davis Warren, he looks really, really solid. Six for nine, 136 yards and two touchdowns in his limited appearances. So, Orgy, he, he looked like he couldn't really get out of the starting blocks. And again, this is a spring game. So, I mean, as a walk-on, I don't know why they don't play him. Well, maybe this is the sign that they do play him. I mean, he's been – I didn't even know he was a walk-on. He's been treated like the backup quarterback this entire time. So, he's going to be taking the knees and finishing this one up. So, we're done. So, yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote for this one, folks. The final score in Ann Arbor, 17 to 7. Davis Warren gets the win for Mays, and I believe gets the my vote for an MVP award in this one because he looked great. And not to mention your couple of running backs like Donovan Edwards, he was very limited in play today. But uh God, Benjamin Hall looked really good for Blue. And also, uh, what was his name? Uh, Tavier Dunlap looked really good, too. Uh, Dunlap 
is a senior running back. And Hall is a sophomore. So I would be, I mean, just based on what I just saw there, I would be having, I would, I'm going to be curious to see who they start week one. I think they might still wind up starting Orgy. But Davis Warren looked really good. So, uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there. Again, we'll be back again later on tonight at 7 o'clock for our UFL primetime game. It's going to be D.C. versus Birmingham. Uh, due to my local affiliate coverage, I might have to make a change and turn that into uh, Panthers against Brahmas, which I did not want to watch. But I don't think I'm going to get a choice because of uh, the local affiliate coverage on Fox. So... This is what it is, but I appreciate you guys being here. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll see you all later on tonight for UFL coverage, and then again we'll be back tomorrow after the game tonight for the game between the Roughnecks and the Defenders, 0-3 versus 0-3, your tank bowl this weekend. So I'll see you guys in a few hours. Thank you very much.